Hi. So the title of my speech is Can a Tweet Change the World? Uh, when people ask me if I enjoy working at Twitter, I always say yes. Uh, and the primary reason is I believe Twitter is a company that actually matters in the world, that contributes and impacts positively the world. Uh, so I'm going to show you why I believe that and that a tweet can actually change the world with, use, you know, with, uh, with different examples. So before we go there, let's talk about mobile. Mobile has dramatically changed the way consumers engage with information, access information, and engage or communicate to one another. People, on average, unlock their phone 150 times a day, which is a crazy number if you think about it. So let's look at this picture. This is a crowd watching the Pope going in Washington, D.C., <laughs> and everybody is basically looking at their phone. So they are looking at the Pope through their screen instead of looking at the Pope, except one lady who seems to actually enjoy the experience more than anybody else. <laughs> so maybe we should use our phone less. Microsoft actually studied how this mobile behavior is changing the attention span of human beings. And their studies show that the attention spans of people have decreased by 30% over the past 13 years, from 12 seconds to 8 seconds, which is actually a bit troublesome because apparently some studies show that goldfish <laughs> have an attention span of 9 seconds. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. We are now below the goldfish. Now let's come back to Twitter. Before I share the examples of how tweet changed the world, let's listen to Sir Patrick Stewart talk about Twitter. I got this call from my wife saying, I've, I've just seen this tweet, you must look at this right away. And David Cameron tweeted a photograph of himself holding a telephone to his ear and looking serious. The brilliant Rob Delaney, he'd seen this and what he tweeted was, <laughs> A photograph of him with a tube of toothpaste in his hand instead of a telephone. So I looked around and there was a tube of wet wipes. So I put, I put this to my ear and put on a very serious face with the, the same little remarks that, that Rob Delaney had made. Well, it exploded. It was an hour later before I looked and saw the myriad, the multitude of photographs that other people had tweeted. I mean, one guy was holding a dog. Somebody else had a baby in their hands, naked little baby. Um, there were bread rolls, there were bananas. It, it was all very funny. I think there is a hunger for this kind of in the moment excitement. And people today are excited by that, by the immediacy of it. It connects them to events, it connects them to people instantly. So together, all the users of Twitter on the world produce 500 million tweets every day. So it's a huge amount of information that actually can help uh, decipher signals and other utilities, which I'm going to speak later. Um, but Sir Patrick Stewart speaks about two very specific things that Twitter is known for compared to other platforms. One is the live nature of Twitter. When a tweet is, being, is composed, it immediately gets published. So we call that the live aspect of Twitter. When something happens in the world, when an event happens in the world, it immediately, instantly, to use Sir Patrick Stewart's word, happens on Twitter. The other aspect is live. So let's look at a couple of examples. This is the Women's World Cup, um, US beating Japan, this amazing game for the, you know, amazing goal for 50 yards. Um, obviously, people start to tweet as soon as they, you know, so that goal from Kobe Bryant to uh, ESPN to any users on Twitter. And this is what we see when we look at the data. We basically we do a line graph and we basically see like an EKG, almost like the pulse of the country experiencing this game together with each peak being the goal of the US team. Um, another example, which actually also happens last year um, during the World Cup, so the yellow dots, I don't know if you can see them, are tweets mentioning the world, the Brazil. There's the Brazil-Germany game. And Germany beat Brazil 7-1. to one, And you can see all the red dots are tweets mentioning Germany. 
And you can see the activity on Twitter while the game is happening. This is a, a two-minute version of the 90-minute game. So this is how Twitter reacts to live events happening in the world. This is not just about sport. This is Earth Hour uh, happening in March, where apparently at 8.30, uh, everybody had to you know, uh, manage their power. And you, you see people tweeting about this uh, Earth Day and this Earth Hour um, together at 8.30 in their local time. Uh, actually, you see the intensity of the, of the tweeting obviously going with the, with the time zone. And the second distinctive aspect of Twitter, it's public. So here we see Barack Obama, who the White House had a Twitter handle for, for many years. Uh, but Barack just joined, um, President Obama just joined. So he said, hi, Twitter, it's Barack. Really, six years in, they're finally letting me in uh, to have my own account. So President Clinton uh, tweet back to him, and everybody can see it because Twitter is public. <laughs> Welcome to Twitter at POTUS. Uh, one question, does that username stay with the office? <laughs> um, thinking of his wife, Hillary. <laughs> the best is actually President Obama reply, good question at Bill Clinton. The handles comes with the house. Do you know anyone interested in at FLOTUS, first lady of the United States? Which if Hillary wins, uh, Bill Clinton will be the first lady of the United States. <laughs> so he will have the handle at FLOTUS. Um, so those are the key aspects of Twitter, public and live. So now let me show you some examples. I'm going to show you quite a few examples. I'm going to go fast. Just how a tweet can actually change the world. So first, tweet can spark movements. We saw that with I stand with Ahmed you know, two, what, two, three weeks ago, when you know, we all know he was arrested for bringing this science project, a clock, to his school. Um, and we had thousands and thousands of people uh, co commenting on Twitter, joining this movement, creating uh, a conversation. And Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama actually joined that conversation. And look at the number of retweets um, of you know, the president's tweet. You're talking 400,000 retweets which means roughly 40 million people are going to see that tweet about uh, uh, the president's opinion of, of what happened. Another example, I don't know if you're familiar with Apple Music. Um, Apple Music, Music was launched three months ago. They launched it with a, with a three-month free trial for users. But what was not known is they actually launched it for the three-month trial where they decided not to pay the artists, the writers and the singers, during the three months of the trial. Taylor Swift did not agree with that. She actually wrote a blog post and then used Twitter and her 64 million followers to share her point of view. This is what happened. The journalist obviously uh, uh, took her, you know, her message. Within 24 hours, the executives at Apple changed their decision and basically decided to pay the artists and the songwriters um, even during the free trial period of uh, Apple Music. So with one tweet pointing to a blog, she basically changed a multi-billion corporation's decision about a very important aspect uh, in the music business. Emma Watson uh, launched a year ago, actually, this movement, hashtag he for she. The idea is to promote gender equality, but her unique idea was that gender equality is not a woman's problem. It's a societal problem, and it's actually a problem for men, too. So sh her point was to encourage women, but also men, to join this movement. Within a week after her speech at the UN, we saw 100 million impressions on Twitter about you know, her speech and the, the people sharing their, their, their opinions about that speech. Uh, she started to, you know, after the, the speech at the UN, wrote that tweet, um, and then we saw the number of retweets. The retweet when someone forward basically that message to all their audience. So she had 20, 29,000 retweets, which again, you can multiply by 100 to give you a sense of the number of people that most likely will view that tweet. What's also interesting is that One Direction, Harry Styles, decided to join the movement. Now look at his number of retweets, is 320,000, because Harry Styles is more popular than Emma Watson. <laughs> which is fine, but he joined the movement, so then 30 more million people can basically be exposed to this movement. Uh, which, which has, you know, has been very successful so far. So a tweet can generate awareness and spark a movement. A tweet can also be a utility and change daily lives. So this is a seismograph. Am I pronouncing it right? Seismograph, yeah? <clears throat> that basically detects and measures the magnitude of earthquake. This is a bar graph that shows 
for every earthquake, how quickly someone is tweeting about the earthquake. And as you can see, the first tweet for one earthquake was within 10 seconds of the earthquake. 75% of the first tweet about an earthquake is within two minutes. The average instrument detecting earthquake in the world in most remote areas take 20 minutes to detect an earthquake. Twitter, with the tweets, signals in two minutes on average an earthquake. So the US Geological Society basically launched TED, a different TED, Twitter Earthquake Dispatch, which is a Twitter handle that basically aggregates the tweets about earthquake and communicate them live, because Twitter is live, to the world. Similar situation in Indonesia. Jakarta has tons of flooding, which are both creating chaos in the streets, but also can actually be life-threatening. So <clears throat> we see people tweeting about what they see, those flooding. So an organ a non-for-profit organization called PETA Jakarta, similar to the earthquake detection, launched a Twitter handle aggregating all the tweets and the pictures about the flooding happening in Jakarta to basically provide live updates now, the Indonesian government and the emergency systems are using this Twitter handle to trigger their disaster response. This one is funny. It's actually really a utility. In Australia, sharks are very dangerous for surfers. They actually put sensors on some sharks, sensor that tweets the geolocation of the shark. <laughs> so as a surfer, this is funny, but it's actually real. It's, 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 you know, it's life protection for a surfer. I'm not a surfer, but... So if you're a surfer, you follow this handle, and you know, basically know if there's a shark coming your way. <laughs> I mean, before you go in the water, just to be clear. Um, and now there's a, there's a project in London happening. It's not live yet, where basically they're going to put sensors on pigeon to measure air uh, pollution, um, and uh, the sensor is going to tweet out uh, and it be connected to a, a mobile app to basically provide people in London uh, different measures about air pollution. <clears throat> Final thing, this is actually a real example, even though it was actually created by a TV station. Potholes that tweet. So this is Panama City, where basically a TV station <laughs> decided to bring attention to a real issue in the city. Panama City is a very, very uh, booming city. The roads are atrocious. There are potholes everywhere. So the TV station decided to put those little devices in potholes, and whenever a car drives above, uh, uh, above that, uh, you know, on the pothole, uh, the potholes tweet out uh, to everybody that follows that Twitter handle, and it's kind of a funny message. Sorry, you know, if I damage your car, or, you know. <clears throat> so what they did is, you know, obviously it's a TV station, so they basically brought the, the attention, you know, of all their uh, viewers and their audience to this issue. They showed all the tweets, they had a whole wall of all the tweets live happening around Panama City. What did the municipality do? They fixed the potholes. <laughs> um, within, uh, within days, they started to fix the potholes in the city. So a tweet can really uh, change the, can be a utility and can change our daily life and can change the world. The last example is how Twitter can affect and impact democracy. You, most of you have heard about the Arab Spring, so I'm actually not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about a very small city in the south of Spain called Rhun. Population is 3,500. And what's unique about this city, I don't know if you can see, on the sleeve of the policeman, he has the Twitter bird with a Twitter handle called Policia Run. The mayor of that city has decided to use Twitter as its infrastructure to manage every single service of the city. Why? Because Twitter is live and it's public. So let me give you an example. Someone, a resident of the city, tweeted, obviously those tweets have been translated, they're Spanish, there's a street lamp uh, in, uh, you know, Maestro Antonio Linares that went out. And he tweets that to the handle of the mayor at uh, Jose Antonio Hun. So the mayor replies, thanks for letting us know. And if you understand Twitter, 
everybody can see those tweets, not just the two people that are you know, connecting. Thankfully, yes, no. Tomorrow, at El Gran SP, we'll fix it. Who is at El Gran SP? He works for the municipality. He has his own Twitter handle. He fixed within 24 hours. If you look at the dates of the tweets, within 24 hours, he fixed the lamp and tweets back to the whole city. The lamp is fixed. Thanks for letting us know. <laughs> so this is 311 in 24 hours in the public space. This is actually the municipality of that town. There's a big Twitter bird and hash, uh, at Ayutamiento Run. So if you want to book an appointment, it's through Twitter. If you want to go through a passport service, it's through Twitter. Not everything is public, obviously. If you have a private complaint, you can, you can use a, a private communication or you can obviously go to, uh, to the office. And this is the mayor of Run. Remember, the town is 3,500 people. His name is uh, Jose Maria Antonio. He has 287,000 followers. He became someone fairly important in Spain because he's trying a different way to apply democratic principles at a small scale, a city of 3,500 people, but we are studying with him lessons that actually could be deployed to much larger institutions and much larger cities. So I hope I made you think, and I hope you're going to start thinking how a tweet can change the world. Thank you very much.